today we talk about so welcome back i believe this is episode 30. all right uh, another special guest introduce yourself my man what's up i'm charles engel i'm a comic here in new york dope yeah all right so typically how i like to start this is uh just giving us like a backdrop of your comedy uh, come up uh, okay. so where you started how long ago inspirations all that kind of stuff i started six years ago in phoenix arizona that's where i'm from mm -hmm. and then recently this past year i lived in Chicago, pretty much a suburb of Chicago for a few months. I moved with my buddy and then I came to New York, I think six months ago. So I've been traveling a little bit and then uh, inspirations, dude, when I first wanted to be, I remember the first joke I ever heard on the radio when I was a kid, I just didn't know what a joke was. And I remember just like passing out. From, like, <laughs> I remember the joke. It was, uh, what did the fish say when it hit the brick wall? Damn. And I, Probably threw up in my mom's <laughs> room. And I just didn't. <laughs> was it like a popsicle stick joke? It was. I, don't, I think it was a popsicle. I'm sure it was like some stupid segment okay. on the radio. Oh, like gotcha, it was probably okay. like I'm flippy and here's my jokes. Yeah. But uh, I could not handle it. And then uh, one day, <laughs> when I was a kid, I knew South Park was on Comedy Central, and I, you know, I turned on the TV expecting to see Comedy Central, uh, South Park. And Jeff Foxworthy was on, and that was the first comic I ever saw, and I was just like, oh, I'll do that. <laughs> that was pretty much it. And then now, influences are just, dude, it's pretty much New York comics, but I mean, my favorites are anywhere from, from Patrice O'Neill to Rory Scovel, I mean, everything. I just don't really like the, uh, the puppets and stuff like that. There's okay. a couple people I've worked with. I have a, my biggest influences right now, as far as inspirations, are, uh, Probably, I don't know if too many, but there's a, a guy named Preacher Lawson. He's a friend of mine. I got to meet him and work with him a little bit. And uh, I think he's one of the best, youngest comics out. And I just think he's, uh, he's like, I've got, he's taken me a couple, I've been on the road. And he was one of oh, the first uh, guys okay. to take me on the road, show me. He's, he's our age. He's super nice. And I think he's one of the funniest people. So to kind of see somebody who is working that hard and also just a good, giving person, it kind of, fulfill, I think, checks all the boxes of like a comic and a good guy. Because right. you kind of have fears I think of someone who's like, he's great, but he's a dick. Yeah. You know? So it's cool to see someone who's at least our age and killing it yeah. still being like, come with. And you're like, all right. Dude, yeah, it's been refreshing because we were talking about this off the air. But, um, but yeah, man, I'm, I've just been super uh, happy with how welcoming, supportive, uh, interactive, like just running into Jim Norton and uh, Bob Kelly on, on yeah. the street and I'm just like hey guys I'm just a big fan like oh thanks man you yeah. know, keep it up with the open mics like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah everybody's super nice you know? nobody's really been I've had one person be an asshole to me but it was just at an open mic and that's, <laughs> that's to be expected you know <laughs> open mic jadedness <laughs> yeah uh, people are sad at open mics yeah dude. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm kind of over it. I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, and th how long have you been doing it? So I I started in uh, November. So okay. I'm like so you're six years in. I'm six months in. Well, um, you're six months in New York. I yeah, mean, yeah, that's for sure, a different. For sure. Yeah, but... very different beast. Um, yeah, it is kind of refreshing going back to Iowa where yeah. I work because like the three open mics that well, yeah. there's, the third one's like a New York open mic, but yeah. uh, the two open mics a week out there. Yeah, there's much less stage time, but like there's real people in the crowd. Yes. It almost feels like you're on, booked on a show. You're just yeah. like, yeah, you know? Yeah, you get a little <laughs> bit, dude. I, there was one when I, so recently, I'm a little bit awkward in real life as far as, uh, I've just gotten to the part where I'm more assertive as okay. far as like, you should book me, here's my resume, here's my tape. But before, I'd be a little anxious. And then you like, oh, maybe I'll stick to open mics until somebody offers me a show. But I mean, being here for six months, and thinking about doing open mics for, you know, I try to go out five days a week, six days a week. That'll put you in a headspace where you're like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> like, people are just, people are in good spirits, but not really, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and you know what else I've noticed is um, is now going to more shows, because like, there's only so many open mics yes. shows I can tolerate. Uh, but now going to more shows, just to... Put, be put in that, like you said, that yeah. bad headspace. Put myself in a good headspace, yes. so to speak, of like, okay, this is like crafted, yeah. structured, people I actually want to see, if not some surprises, yeah. inspiring me to do new jokes all of a sudden. Like I came up with the show we met up at last night. I came up with like two jokes. Yeah, so you're writing in the old notebook. Yeah. The spark went off. I was jealous. I was like, fuck. <laughs> what is that joke? I tried to like, look. <laughs> Maybe I can have a segment off of that. <laughs> Maybe a tag. Yeah, well, dude. It's, uh, it was more personal to my upbringing, so I don't know if it oh, yeah. related well, to Oh, yeah. We but... grew up together. Hey. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> no, it was... Uh, actually, I'll just tell you. It's, um, so I, I mentioned on the podcast before... Um, 
but I never thought, and we were talking about this too, how like certain topics you talk about just willy nilly will all of a sudden become bits. Yes. And, um, and I talked about this on the podcast and then last night sitting through one of the comics talking about her upbringing, I was like, oh shit, I should just work that into a bit. And I just thought of another example. And what I wrote down was, or what I said a few podcasts back was how like what motivated me to like quote succeed in life and like actually pursue something that pays well. Cause I didn't grow up with a ton of money and, um, and I just remember thinking like, this sucks. Yeah. And I was like, I want to do something about this. And, uh, and one of the things that drove me among many other things was like the stench of like a garage sale and the things in it. Like, you know how the clothes from a garage sale have a certain smell? It's like, yeah, worse than Goodwill. Yeah. You're like, yeah. The only, well, I guess the only good thing about Goodwill is it's a garage sale with that's closed in AC. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, but that, and then I was like, Oh shit, I should actually turn that into a bit. And then the example I thought of to write down as well was during her uh, set was the other thing that really drove me was I remember rebates. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> did you ever do them? I did a couple of them. Yeah. yeah so I remember my dad segmenting out <laughs> an evening. See, I love that you laughed already. And, uh, and calling would, in? <laughs> no, not even calling in, but like a segment of family time after yeah. dinner was to sit on the fucking floor and just cut up these fucking rebate coupons, stick them into envelopes with the appropriate receipts, oh matching up receipts. And like literally for hours, once every few months or so, it felt like we were doing this. And I was just like, I don't want to do this. Yeah, we're saving like, like five bucks. Yeah. Like, come on. You're doing man. filing work. Yeah. yeah. Like a, as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, I don't know if you've ever, have you ever been in that position where you go to an office and they're like, you're in the files all right, day right. and you're like, where is there a knife back there? Because I'm <laughs> going to kill myself. Yeah. So, so that's what I was writing down. So, uh, that's good. Yeah. Rebate. So let me ask you, were you a family that kept the free AOL CDs in the mail? We kept them, but we never used them. Yeah. See, that's what always, if for me, it was, if I got them, it was throw them. Mm. But if my mom got them, it was like, I got something for you. And I was like, mom, you did not, this was in the mail. I'm right, seeing right, right through the gift yeah. that you're giving. No, my dad would like, for lack of a better term, hoard everything. So okay. like, I, there's literally a, a room in my basement back home that's just suitcases that have never been used. <laughs> like, and they're just all bad suitcases. They just sit there. And I'm like, Dad, what the fuck are you doing? What is, my- his, uh, what is his answer? I don't, I've never even like fully asked them, yeah. like person to person. I just, I <laughs> Why just are you afraid? Wonder, of, yeah, yeah, probably. Like what, what reason do I have to challenge his? What uh, are you keeping in those secrets then? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's the nothing suitcases. in there. I've, I've looked at them, but uh, now now it's just the suit, the uh, suitcases and all my shoe boxes. That's okay. Like, that's like, well, that's in there. Um, so maybe his suitcase thing is your shoe thing. Hey, maybe yeah. like, <laughs> you're, you're, you're your dad, but it's better taste. Yeah, right. And, uh, maybe he has blast. a YouTube channel with suitcases. <laughs> Pick out your favorite suitcases. Yeah, right. He, he's actually been on my sneaker segment oh, where he, he picks has? the top six ugly six, and uh, people love my dad. Oh, yeah, that's he's awesome. He's a character. What is, uh, is he? Uh, like he's like mom? me, but older. Okay, And yeah. uh, more, even cornier than me. Oh, know? he's cor- I have yeah. a very cheesy dad. Yeah. My dad is the... Uh, go to a restaurant and make jokes to the server the whole time (laughs) and it's just the same it's like you see a comedian maybe maybe you saw him 10 years ago and then you see him 10 years later and it's like the same act yep 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 (laughs) my dad always has the same joke he loves to take and maybe someday if this comedy thing goes somewhere I'd love to feature him and have him tell his joke it'll be be great Um, but uh, but yeah he's he's cheesy but like in the fun dad way like everyone loves my dad like my dad is the shit you know um He's definitely not a dad I'm embarrassed of, which yeah, that's great. Yeah, um, but uh, but yeah, man, those fucking rebates, man, dude, that that's so me. funny. That drove me to succeed. Yeah, <laughs> that's what drove me to succeed. The rebates. <laughs> so let me ask you. I don't know if you get to. This doesn't need to be a serious question at all. Okay. But I always wonder from people, um, or if you get this question a lot, people that are in higher up jobs. You're a doctor, right? Yeah. Do you find the process of since you went through intensive schooling, right? You had no choice. Comedy is something that crafting, you can't give up or like, maybe I'll take a break. Right. Maybe I'll look at porn. Do you find that with that? I mean, you always, you're on the computer. There's always like, time for porn. Yeah, right? there's always time. Even if they are not playing, you got Wi-Fi. <laughs> you ask for a little blanket. But um, 